Today we are on the road and we're visiting Board Games Store in Columbus, Indiana. And I've got guests with me. I've got Candle and Hadassah who are not by eyeball games. They I, I do some design on games. And we got to play Carnegie today. So this is a game that just came out from Kickstarter. I actually got it in the uh, FedEx, delivered it about two and a half weeks late, but it arrived and uh, got to get it to the table. Before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell over there because you want to follow along with all of this. You might see Rob pacing around behind us on the video here as we're recording. So uh, we're in his neck of the woods. There he is. <laughs> he didn't get to play because nope. he was a slacker. So let's talk about the stats on this game. So this was a 2022 release, obviously. It's got a Board Game Geek rating of 7.9, a Board Game Geek rank currently of 802. One to four player game, average length is 120 to 180 minutes. Uh, that's 120 is what's printed on the box. You actually yeah. guessed it right yeah. when we were first starting out. Uh, age 12 and up, it's designed by Xavier Georges, art by Ian O'Toole. It's one of Rob's favorite artists. Yeah. Uh, published by Quinet Games. Uh, now, the Kickstarter for this was actually really reasonably priced. It was like uh, just under 70 euros. Uh, it was roughly, for us, $70, a little more, um, with, and then shipping. But when you see the pieces, it, it's pretty impressive. Uh, game, you know, right now, it's obviously not available as a as Kickstarter because it's already completed. But you can still pick it up at Game Steward for $159.99, so quite a markup, but it is available. Uh, eBay, they're selling it for $199.99. Uh, there is a copy on Geek Market available for $130, so that's the cheapest I've found. What's shipping? <laughs> yeah, we don't know what shipping is, so Game Steward did have free shipping, but yeah. you're paying $160 for it either way. So, um, well, let's talk about the quality of components here. So, first of all, everything is linen finished. I mean, all the tiles, you've got the board. Uh, there's cards for the solo play. All of them were linen finished. It came with sleeves for all the cards. I'd say the most impressive thing was there was no punching. Everything was already sorted and arranged in the storage you know, game play. trays. Yeah, it was ready to play. Just get it out. Uh, it was, I mean, it was the first time I've seen that. I was floored when I got this out because you know, that's just, you never see that. Um, there's a you know, metal first player token for uh, this train, but surprising, there's this gear that's used for your actions. It's heavier than the train. It's, it, it doesn't look it, but it is. It's actually, Kill some yeah, it. it's definitely heavy metal. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I guess it goes along with the Carnegie steel. Uh, there's, uh, there, there were wood tokens for the goods. Uh, I added a, a upgrade that I was for gold metal tokens. Uh, so I had, that, that was the only maintenance I had to do when I opened the box was swapping out all the wood for the gold metal, uh, tokens. All of the, uh, markers are screen printed. Uh, they're very pretty. Uh, the only problem I had was one of my action markers had, it was off center. So I don't know if I can write the company and possibly get that corrected, but that's the only problem I had with this whole thing. But I always have to have one problem every time I get the game. There's always one. There's always one of them. Uh, but, you know, as far as the quality, I mean, you've got boards. They're not inlaid, but you're, all you're doing is putting tiles on top. But, but they have something unique you know, with these sliding boards that go inside of them. Uh, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, it was, it's very unique. I've never seen a game do that. Um, all in all, I mean, what do you all think as far as the quality? The quality is great. I, mean, I just, I was floored with uh, how everything has just got its own little compartment for everything and everything fits in there just snugly. I mean, you can shake this thing and it's not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. And it just snaps on there perfectly. You just pop it off. Yeah, it was very easy to get it's it very out. very intuitive, you know, what you're, you know what you need to grab a hold of. Yeah, mm -hmm. very sturdy and tactile pieces. I thought it was easy to handle. Mm -hmm. Those are very chunky, very chunky uh, needles too. <laughs> so as far as our scoring, we always use five as our baseline. We use Catan kind of as our guide for our midpoint. What do you all think from a scale from one to 10, what would you rate this? For this? 
I would, I would give it probably an eight. An eight? Okay. okay. I, I like the game a lot. I mean, I thought it was pretty well up there. <laughs> yeah. I'd have to play it some more, but it'd be my first time. Well, I'm talking about just the quality of the components. Oh, the quality. Yeah. 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 The quality of the components, is, I, I give it an eight. Yeah. An eight? I, this to me is a 10. I mean, everything about this I like. There's not a single, I mean, if I'm going to detract anything, it's for that one marker being off center. I, I honestly can't think of anything to fault this for. It's The board is beautif beautifully designed. It's got a nice texture on it. It's great, a really good size for the game. Uh, the pieces being all screen printed and you know well designed. Yeah. There's nothing that's made cheaply. Everything is well made. Um, the money felt. I mean, when you had you were able to hold the money and stuff mm -hmm. like that, there were big enough pieces to where you know mm -hmm. when you were holding it that you know you felt like you had something. You were acquiring something. So yeah. And and they were glossy. They weren't. You know, yeah. a yeah. like you were, a shine. When I first saw you it, I thought it was getting. metal. Yeah, whenever you showed cardboard, me. but thought, they're glossy. I thought, man, they have a real metallic feel I, to them. I thought it was going to be like metal, and I was like, how heavy is this game? Because <laughs> everything else you showed me was metal. Yeah, like the little cubes and everything. And yeah, so yeah. All right, I, so. I would probably give it more on the quality end. It, you know. Yeah. If that was the case, I mean, I, 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 I mean if it, it, it felt like it all belonged together because you you see the money on here on mm -hmm. this, and then you're filling the money there, and so yeah, it felt like yeah, I I would give it a ten too because I, that's the way I felt like I felt like it was all put together. Yeah, I felt like it was everything was there that you needed and that you um, you could understand clearly what you were seeing on the pieces itself, especially even the properties there. Mm -hmm. so. The yeah. board, I like the board how it's it's not got this real deep colors to it because it, it keeps you from being distracted. Yeah. Because I hate it whenever you see these these full on bright colors. Because there's a lot going on there. Yeah. yeah. So. I so mean, whenever you start adding all the pieces on there. Yeah. It don't it don't take away from what's you know. Well, that's a good segue into theme. That's the next category. So the theme of this is Carnegie Steel. So you're running a business. Now, this is where I don't feel like it felt like a steel business. It was a business. I mean, it was clearly a business, but there's nothing that made me feel like this was a steel business. It's, you know, it's, you're sending people to HR, you're sending people to, uh, you know, <laughs> take actions in different in business offices. And you're spreading across the country, yeah. but nothing really felt steel. There was railroad. Yeah. I mean, you obviously had the development of your uh, transportation across across it, and it definitely had a railroad feel, mm -hmm. which Carnegie was also historically aff affiliated with. But steel is really what he's known for. Yeah. And I just didn't get any kind of steel vibe. This felt very much like a Lacerda game. Uh, so it, you know, as far as the different kind of generic actions, but mm -hmm. they were. You know, it, it felt tight and crisp and, you know, but that's more of a gameplay thing. Um, I just didn't feel the steel at the part of it. But the colors, I love the subdued colors, like you said. I love the, the way the board's laid out, the look of everything. Everything is clear. I like the fact that they put all the iconography very easy referenced and the scoring on the board, you didn't, we didn't catch it until the very end. <laughs> But it was there. It's there right in front of us. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, as far as the scoring for the connections, that's all at the top. Everything is easily referenced. And, you know, it's not hard to find anything, even when we get to the rules. We'll talk about that more. Um, this iconography is, you know, once you get used to it, it's kind of, it becomes some, somewhat intuitive. I think there's a little still towards the end. We were still doing some yeah. looking up. Trying but, to remember the terminologies because it had some terminology. And stuff yeah. Yeah. Like but it wasn't real confusing. I mean, it, it kind of made sense, everything. Um, so I think from a theme perspective, I'm more of an eight on this one. I think that, you know, like you said, um, it is beautiful. It's, you know, looks very nice. I just wish it could have somehow conveyed more of the there steel. There was a disconnect with that. I, yeah. I, I agree with that. Because, yeah, there was nothing about the real steel, really. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't it, hit, see nothing in there about because it's he's all about that. Yeah, it's definitely a business. I mean, you definitely felt yeah, like you were like doing, you were out running it felt a business. More like an office work kind of. Yeah, exactly. It felt like an office work. I agree. 
So what were your thoughts? That's what I thought exactly. I, I felt like I was in a little cubicle, and at some point <laughs> I felt like I was getting closed in, because, uh, and then I felt like I was managing so much right here. It was a little distracting right here, but it was, it was like each part of the board had something. There wasn't anything that was not connected to anything. The little pieces that were on here were doing a, doing their job there. These were doing their job here. Then you had so much going on here. And it was hard to really focus on what to pay attention to, not in a negative way. It was it is a very pleasing game for the busy mind. Mm -hmm. It really is. And if you enjoy like moving your hands around and like you know venturing out there's just so much to focus on you will not i mean it, it's it's satisfying for the thirsty soul mm -hmm. i mean seriously there's what, so much juiciness to this game that it, it's it's really hard not to recognize it's like four games in one in my opinion i was thrilled i was just yeah, in touch menu. with it i love yeah. the worker placement i love the the engine building am i going too far i just really like this game so okay so the theme <laughs> what, what would you give the theme scott first for the score guys i mean the theme of the game um the only thing i probably wouldn't have felt fit in was the cubicles i didn't understand <laughs> them i didn't see how what what are we where does that place your mind as a gamer into the game? It didn't draw me in when I was right here. I mean, I kind of understood it, but maybe if I understood the background or the history of maybe where this game came from, I would understand that part of it. But to me, it felt like it needed a little bit more something right here, but I, I understood <laughs> what was working for it. But yeah, I, I don't think I needed to be in a cubicle. <laughs> I just felt like I needed to be somewhere else on that part because the board was an entirely different, exciting world. It was like you had your own personal worker placement area that you had yeah. to manage yourself. But you just, but you had to You really felt play. a little closed in. But yeah, you, you felt a little like alone yeah. in that. Just a little. So, but yeah. So thematically, where would you rank this? Thematically? I, I I say probably about seven. Seven? Okay. I think I'm right there with him on that. I enjoyed mm -hmm. the board, but the player uh, board right here, it just <laughs> needed a, a little bit more something. Yeah. yeah. Just a little bit more, some uh, something thematically. Yeah. yeah. So let's move on to the rule book. So the rule book, first of all, is very, very pretty, a very nice texture. It's got a, it's a paper book, but it has a nice feel to it. And it is... 20 pages long, uh, but when you, I first got it out, I was thinking this is going to be intimidating. Yeah. But really, the rules end at page 13. After that, it gets into reference. It goes into the, the donations, the different types of values, which are basically in-game bonuses you can get, the departments and all what they all do, and then the solo rules. So 13 pages for a game this of this co complexity is not bad, and yeah. and it did an effective job of communicating it. Yeah. Uh, it it's if, got, if they could get all the rules in that shorter, yeah, time, that that that's a makes me in a happy place. Right. I mean, there, it was a little confusing as I read through it because it, there is uh, a lot to this game. It is heavy, yeah. but it's I would call this a medium to heavy game. It's not super heavy, uh, you know. And once you get playing it, a lot of it's intuitive. Yeah. And, you know, there are things that it reminds you of. It reminds you of some Ticket to Ride. It reminds you some of, uh, you know, like I said, the Lacerda series of games because you're taking actions and the, the actions have iconography that's very similar to what you would see in a Lacerda game. Uh, and it, it is definitely a point salad game. There's a lot of ways of scoring in this yeah, game. Yeah, because you don't get no points hardly at the beginning, but at the end, you're, that's when you're scoring. Area. Yeah, there's most of the scoring is... Because you were at zero yeah. until the very end. And, and then I ran away with it at the end, yeah. yeah. And it's a lot of it's all in-game scoring. There is some... You get some scoring during the game. If very you get rare. Some, yeah, very rare, but it's you can do it, but you don't get a lot. Well, like, like you, were, you were over there playing... You know, and I saw the light bulb click in your head, and, you're like, <laughs> and then you're like, "Oh, I know exactly what to do." And yeah, it's it's that thing. It's very satisfying when that happens when you're yeah. playing a game and you just it, it finally hits you, and you're like, "Do it, okay, this is what I need to do to get yeah. my strategy to work." And so, this is one of those games that does that. You get if you definitely play the next time, you know exactly what to do. The first time's more like a, uh, you know, getting your bearings. What's this do? Testing the ground, but. I can see this game being 
very replayable. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, c I couldn't, I couldn't Especially grasp that, my that own board strategy. It has got some, you know, ver variability. To yeah, it. you can change it out. And so. so, I mean, the art, the the book has lots of good examples, very mm -hmm. pictorial, and yeah. uh, it's well laid out. I really like the rule book, and it's got a nice reference on the back for the turn order. <laughs> The setup, which is also on cards. They have cheat sheet cards that reference these exact same things. The icon reference down here is very helpful if you because it shows basically every icon you see on the board. Um, you know, we did have, like when we were going through, we had a little trouble finding some of the stuff because I think some of the pages stuck together when we were trying to go through to find because it was in the book as far as the donations. That was where we had, you know, some questions over what, what scored on the donations exactly what those meant and then of course we had to reference all of the different uh offices yeah. and what they did you know whenever we were getting them because it was as a first time play you, you know you look at you that iconography you it, yeah. got you have to understand exactly but once, what once you explained what they did you're like oh yeah it, you didn't have to what did this do again it right. was just it was basically you told us once and you knew exactly which what further yeah. amped up the strategy to this because when you're looking at this you've got these symbols on here you've got these symbols on here to consider mm -hmm. your, your moves on here it just it went back and forth you you there there's no room for ap in this game no. you just have to kind of narrow it down to what you got to do yeah. But given the complexity of this game and how easy it was to get it to the table oh, yeah. without you know a whole lot of spending time reading, you know we were able to get through and pick it up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give this a nine. I think it's a very effective rule book for mm -hmm. what we went through. I've never seen a rule book with this complexity that short. Yeah, that that's just that's boggles yeah. my mind how they're able to. Be very clear with their rules. The examples as and well. And I think these are for is this a foreign company? Uh Quarnet, I'm not sure. So yeah, I just kind of that kind of crazy that they can write such clear rules. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. All right, so let's move on to gameplay. So this game, you're you're basically managing your own business. You've got a starter uh, business, which is very small. You've got five different offices in there, one of which is basically your HR department, which is all about moving your workers around your building. Uh, and you have an action board, which manages all the turns of the game. Mm -hmm. So there's 20 rounds in this game, which sounds like a lot, but really a, one round is one action for every player and one event that potentially could benefit every player. The game centers around this whole thing. Right. And there's a gear that you mark which action you're taking, which will trigger an event based on where you place it, but also triggers the row that will give everyone an action of that type. So the action will trigger all of the offices in your business of that type which I thought that was really cool, the mechanism. Mm -hmm. um, Very cool. And then as, at the end of the round, after you've taken the actions, every, the, the gear is given to the next player and the action moves on. So each one of these rows, you will only get to take five actions in. Now you might be able to trigger that same action again, but it will be using another row's turn. <laughs> so you'll be suffering a loss of another action in a different row. So there's only 20 actions, but you can potentially get more of one type than five tiger. by sacrificing one of the other it's ones. It's tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. Yes. Yeah. So the different actions are HR, as we mentioned. You have the um, management, which basically triggers your ability to uh, gain resources or money, mm -hmm. but it also allows you to build additional office buildings in, or rooms into your building. And then the the construction is what lets you expand your territories on the board. Uh, you assign workers to the board and take over different areas. And you're, this is where you're trying to do the ticket to rider. You're basically connecting your, your different <laughs> routes, stations and so, routes. Yeah, that was one thing I was trying to figure, I figured out later on was the chains. When you connect each chain, how that can really boost mm -hmm. your points at the end. And, and that's, you figured it out. That's yeah. you're, you're like that light bulb came on. <laughs> and additionally, it also generates income for you because these, these 
pullouts on the side yeah. expose more and more discs mm -hmm. that you will use to place onto the board. And underneath, once you do that, when you recall your workers from the board at different points, which are triggered by the events that happen, mm -hmm. then you will get income based upon the discs that you placed, all the open spaces. And you, that can be money, that can be resources, mm -hmm. it can be additional workers, it can be victory points. There's lots of different income that you can score. And once you reach a certain point on these, you'll actually unlock permanent victory points mm -hmm. at the end of the game. So, you know, it's a really nice system you've got and you can build it at your, the, the style that you prefer, which I like. Uh, two of them require two good, one good and two require two good. So, you know, some of them are a little harder to get based but, upon how many but goods. You do get a lot of goods. Yeah. You know, in reward yeah. later on. Particularly for the yellow track, because yeah. that's where most of the goods are. That's so where that's you, where I ended up you started, benefiting. Yeah, you started figuring that out. So, um, the, you know, I think that was, you know, a really neat mechanism. And then the last one is the R&D department. And the R&D department will let you either increase the speed of, or your type of technology you use to move around the track. So it lets you build to railroads because you start out with carriages and then you can go to more powerful carriages or to the railroad in each region. The other thing it lets you do is actually open up these areas where you can add on more discs to oh. place on the board. So that kind of goes hand in hand with the construction. Uh, you can't, if you run out of discs, you can't construct. So you've got to kind of keep a balance on those. Um, the events that you can take will either be one of two types. You're either going to remove workers from the board to gain the income, or you're going to, you tr to make donations. And that's where you trigger in-game scoring. It costs $5 for your first donation, but everyone thereafter is an additional $5. So it's 10, 15, and so on. So they get very costly, but they are generating you victory points at the end of the game or conditional victory points up to 12 points per for meeting the conditions mm -hmm. on there. So it gives you a target to go for during the game to try to hit those, you know, maximize those scoring. Yeah, you, you can focus on one thing uh -huh. and, and you could probably win the game. It's like there's different routes that you can go for. Yeah. Different strategies. I could see that. And it's just, just, I love that. You yeah. Know, I love it, how you, you don't, it's kind of a sandbox. Yes. And then I at guess. the, you know, at the end of the game, after those 20 rounds, you're scoring a ton of points. It's like, you know, you, you, you don't think you're doing that well. Yeah. And all of a sudden, well, I'm getting 12 points for this bonus and 12 mm -hmm. points for that bonus. Yeah, it ramps up. It just adds up really yeah. well. You know, as far as this game, it was exactly my kind of game. I was very happy with this. I, I you know, it, it, there's elements of Cora that was out last year at Gen Con that this reminds me of some basic elements of that. Uh, I love that game, but I like this one more. Yeah. I, I was really pleasantly surprised at how much I like this We're game. We're going to hear a lot of news about this, I guarantee. Yeah. Now that it's coming out. Uh, yeah, I, 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 Quinet has had some good games. This is the first great game I've seen yeah. from them. This one knocked it out of the park in my eyes. Yeah. You know, it's perfect. I, I, I have to give it a ten. I, there's nothing I don't like about this game. It was great. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I give it ten. Same here. I thought it was excellent. And I don't, I don't throw that around. Will you yeah, I, you know, I, I, I've been over the time here. I've been the hard grader, and this, these lately, I feel like I'm the the, the cake grader because mm -hmm. I've been given tens a lot. Because Wonderland's Wars knocked me over with its quality. Mm -hmm. This one is just amazing. I'm very glad I had I backed it because uh, I mean, especially looking at the prices now for it, this was a, a definitely a good purchase. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if you haven't seen this, check it out. Uh, the retail version, I'm sure, will be coming out soon. I don't know what you know, the, the quality difference will be for the retail version. It probably won't be that bad. Yeah, it, you know, like the, the, the game itself came with wood cubes. I, you really didn't need the gold ones. I mean, looking at it, I, I probably could have I'm been perfectly happy Unless with the wood ones. you want to throw them at somebody and hurt them. Yeah. <laughs> Things are heavy. <laughs> So, you feel like you got some pet. Like yeah. You know. well, I, I would be more worried about this gear yeah, than anything. Gear. That's, uh, <laughs> okay. that's, one day I'm afraid Miranda's going to get upset with me while we're playing this, and I'm going to have this gear shaped <laughs> invention in my head. So um, yeah, I, I definitely like this game a lot. Yeah. This is going to be on my radar. 
even but the price is a little high that, yeah that I, I i can see you know games are going up 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 they're going down mm -hmm. if you ever pick can pick this one up for a good price grab it <laughs> yeah especially if you like the medium to heavy games i mean if you're a light gamer this is probably going to be on the heavy side for you but it's not that bad like, it's not that bad once you get into it but yeah. you know if, if you're not if you don't get someone who can help explain it to yeah. you you get somebody to tell you you know kind of walk through or that's but the rule book i mean look at it. i mean yeah. I mean, it's not intimidating. No, it's not intimidating, but you know, I'm I'm saying like if you're if you're used to like ticket to ride, yeah. this is not this no. is a huge <laughs> jump from ticket this to is, ride. This is like a big yeah, it's a huge a huge uh, leap. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you for joining us today and thank board games for hosting us today because this is a uh, it's cool to get out of the house and get to be in an environment where I can look at games while we're playing and uh, well, games that are available to purchase in yeah. string crap. And, uh, you know, it's cool to see some some of friends from up here. Jonathan was up here, Rob, obviously. And uh, so until next time, well, well, we'll see you at Origins if you're at Origins. So uh, check, it, check us out. Miranda and I will be there and uh, look forward to seeing you. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.